strange magic in this love of ours. Rivals as we all are in the affections of our Reginald. The very hopelessness of our love is a bond that binds us to one another. <laughs> Jealousy is merged in misery. Well, he, the very cynosure of our eyes and hearts, remains icy and sensible. What have we to strive for? The love of maidens is to him as interesting as the taxes. Would that it were, he pays his taxes <laughs> and cherishes the receipts. Oh, happy receipts. Oh. Fools. Oh, I beg your pardon. Fools and blind. The man loves, wildly loves. But whom? None of us. No, none of us. His weird fancy has lighted for the nonce on patience, the village milkmaid. <laughs> on patience? Oh, it cannot be. Bah! But yesterday I caught him in her dairy eating fresh butter with a tablespoon. <laughs> Today he is not well. <laughs> But Patience boasts that she has never loved, that to her love is a sealed book. Oh, he cannot be serious. Tis but a passing fancy, twill quickly wear away. Oh, Reginald, if you but knew what a wealth the golden love is waiting for you, stored up in this rugged old bosom of mine, the milkmaid's triumph would be short indeed. <laughs> Still brooding of a mad infatuation, I thank thee, love, thou comest not to me. Far happier I, free from thy ministration, than dukes or duchesses who love can be. Tis patience.
truly happy always seem to have so much on their minds. The truly happy never seem quite well. There is a transcendentality of delirium, an acute accentuation of supremest ecstasy, which the earthy might easily mistake for indigestion, but it is not indigestion. It is aesthetic transfiguration. Oh, enough of babble. Come. But stay. I have some news for you. The 35th Dragoon Guards have halted in the village and are even now on their way to this very spot. The 35th Dragoon Guards? Oh, they are fleshly men of full habit. We care nothing for Dragoon Guards. But bless me, you were all engaged to them a year ago. A year ago? I mean. My poor child, you don't understand these things. A year ago, they were very well in our eyes, but since then, our tastes have been etherealized, our perceptions exalted. Come, it is time to lift up our voices in morning carol to our Reginald. Let us to his door. Oh, 
fortune to be a duke with a thousand a day. And most men would envy you. Envy me? Tell me, Major, are you fond of toffee? Very. We are all fond of toffee. We yeah. are. Yes, and toffee in moderation is a capital thing. But to live on toffee, toffee for breakfast, toffee for dinner, toffee for tea, to have it supposed that you care for nothing but coffee, and that you would consider yourself insulted if anything but toffee were offered to you? How would you like that? Well, I could quite understand that under those circumstances, even toffee could become monotonous. For a toffee, read flattery, adulation, and abject deference carried on to such a pitch that I began at last to believe that man was born bent at an angle of 45 degrees. Great heavens, what is there to adulate in me? Am I particularly intelligent? No. Or remarkably studious? No. no. Or excruciatingly witty? No. Or unusually accomplished? No. no. Or exceptionally virtuous? No. <laughs> You're about as commonplace a young man as ever I saw. You are. You are. That's it. That's it exactly. That describes me to a T. Thank you all very much. Well, I couldn't stand it any longer, so I joined this second-class cavalry regiment. In the army, thought I, I shall be occasionally snubbed. Perhaps even bullied, who knows? The thought was rapture, and here I am. And uh, here are the ladies. But who is the gentleman with the long hair? I don't know. He seems popular. He does seem popular. <laughs>
twenty lovesick maidens they. He used to have all his day, twenty lovesick maidens they. Transcendental law is monopolizing me. Round the corner I can see, each is kneeling on her knee. Round the corner he can see, each is kneeling on her knee. Now he's starting to speak ridiculous, and he's starting to speak posturous. The car of best absurdity, ridiculous, preposterous. Explain it if you can. Now he's starting to speak ridiculous, and he's starting to speak posturous. The car of best absurdity, explain it if you can. Yearns for the arrow, faint with rapturous thrills. 
how can he him their throes, knowing as well he knows that they are only uncompounded pills? Is it and can it be nature hath this decree, nothing poetic in the world shall dwell, or that in all her works something poetic lurks even in colocynth and calomel? I cannot tell. Oh, how purely fragrant, how earnestly precious. Well, it seems to me to be nonsense. <laughs> nonsense, yes, perhaps. But oh, what precious nonsense! This is all very well, but you seem to forget that you are engaged to us. Oh, it can never be. You are not Empyrean. You are not Delacroskin. You are not even early English. Oh, be early English, ere it is too late. Red and yellow. Primary colors. Oh, South Kensington. We didn't design our uniforms, but we don't see how they could be improved. And no, you wouldn't. Still, Variants of cobwebby grey velvet with a tender bloom like cold gravy, which made Florentine 14th century and trimmed with Venetian leather and Spanish altar lace and, and surmounted with something Japanese. <laughs> it matters not what. Would at least be early English. <laughs> Come, maiden. Twenty lovesick maidens we Lovesick all our gifts of will Twenty innocents we shall be Twenty lovesick maidens to the British uniform. A uniform which has been as successful in the courts of Venus as on the field of Mars. <laughs> Severe is but a mere veneer. This cynic smile is but a wile of guile. This costume chaste is but good taste. 
Confess a languid love for lilies does not blight me. Lank limbs and haggard cheeks do not delight me. I do not care for dirty greens by any means. I do not long for all one sees that's Japanese. I am not fond of uttering platitudes in stained glass attitudes. In short, my medievalism's affectation, born of a morbid love of admiration. If you're anxious for to shine in the high aesthetic line as a man of culture rare, you must get up all the germs of the transcendental terms and plant them everywhere. You must lie upon the daisies and discourse the novel phrases of your complicated state of mind. The meaning doesn't matter if it's only idle chatter of a transcendental kind. And everyone will say, as you walk your mystic way, if this young man expresses himself in terms too deep for me, why, what a very singularly deep young man this deep young man must be. Eloquent in praise of the very dull old days which have long since passed away. And convince him, if you can, that the reign of good Queen Anne was culture's palmiest day. Oh, of course, you will poo poo whatever's fresh and new and declare it's crude and mean. For up stuff short in the cultivated court of the Empress Josephine. And everyone will say, as you walk your mystic way, if that's not good enough for him, which is good enough for me, why, what a very cultivated kind of youth this kind of youth must be. Then a sentimental passion of a vegetable fashion must excite your languid spleen. An attachment a la Plato for a bashful young potato or a not too French French bean. Though the Philistines may jostle, you will rank as an apostle in the high aesthetic band. If you walk down Piccadilly with a poppy or a lily in your medieval hand. And everyone will say, as you walk your flowery way, if he's content with a vegetable love, which would certainly not suit me, why, what a most particularly pure young man this pure young man must be. Come hither. I am pleased with thee. The bitter-hearted one who finds all else hollow is pleased with thee. For you are not hollow, are you? No, thanks. I have dined. Oh, but I beg your pardon. I interrupt you. Oh, life is made up of interruptions. The tortured soul yearning for solitude writhes under them. Oh, but my heart is a whip. Oh, I am a cursed thing. Don't go. Really, I'm very sorry. I don't... Tell me, girls, do you ever yearn? I yearn my living. No, no. <laughs> do you know what it is to be heart hungry? Do you know what it is to uh, yearn for the infinity and yet to be brought face to face daily with the multiplication tables? Do you know what it is to seek oceans and to find puddles? That's my case. Oh, I am a cursed thing. Don't go. If you please, I don't understand you. You frighten me. Don't be frightened. It's only poetry. Oh, well, if that's poetry, I don't like poetry. Don't go. Can I trust her? Patience. You don't like poetry. Well, it 
between you and me. I don't like poetry. It's hollow, unsubstantial, unsatisfactory. What's the use of yearning for Elysian fields when you know you can't get them and would only let them out on building leases if you had them? <laughs> Sir, honestly, hey, please, please. I have long loved you. Let me tell you a secret. I am not as bilious as I look. If you like, I will cut my hair. There is more innocent fun in me than a casual spectator would imagine. You have never seen me frolicsome. Be a good girl, a very good girl, and one day you shall. If you are fond of touching your jocularity, this is the shop for it. Sir, I will speak plainly. In the matter of love, I am untaught. I have never loved but my great aunt. But I'm quite sure that under any circumstances, I couldn't possibly love you. Oh, you think not? Oh, I'm quite sure of it. Quite sure. Quite. Yeah. Very good. Life is henceforth a blank. I don't care what becomes of me. <laughs> I have only to ask that you not abuse my confidence. Though you despise me, I am extremely popular with the other young ladies. I only ask that you leave me and never renew the subject. Certainly. Broken hearted and desolate, I go. Oh, to be wafted away from that black apple dawn of sorrow, where the dust of an earthy today is the earth of a dusty tomorrow. It is a little thing of my own. I call it heart foam. I shall not publish it. Oh. Farewell. Patience, patience, farewell. Oh, what on earth does it all mean? Why does he love me? Why does he expect me to love him? He's not a relation. Oh, it frightens me. Tell me two things. Firstly, what on earth is this love that upsets everybody? And secondly, how is it to be distinguished from insanity? Poor, poor blind child. Oh, forgive her, Eros. Why, love is of all passions the most essential. It is the embodiment of purity, the abstraction of refinement. It is the one unselfish emotion in this whirlpool of grasping greed. Oh, oh dear. Why are you crying? <laughs> to think that I have lived all these years without having experienced this ennobling and unselfish passion. Why, what a wicked girl I must be. Uh, for it is unselfish, isn't it? Absolutely. Love that is tainted by selfishness is no love. Oh, try, try, try to love. It really isn't that difficult if you put your whole mind to it. I'll set about it at once. I won't go to bed until I'm head over ears in love with somebody. Noble girl. <laughs> uh, but is it possible that you've never loved anybody? Yes, one. Ah, whom? My great aunt. Great aunts don't count. Oh, well, then there's nobody. At least, uh, no, nobody. Uh, not since I was a baby. But that don't count, I suppose. You don't know. Tell me all about it. Long years ago, 14 may be, when but a tiny bee Beauty rare with marvelous eyes and wondrous hair. Who 
dreadful to think of the appalling state I must be in. I had no idea that love was a duty. No wonder they all look so unhappy. Oh, upon my word, I hardly like to associate with myself. Oh, I don't, I don't think I'm respectable. I'll go at once and fall in love with a stranger. Really pretty maiden, really tell me true. Hey, but I'm doleful, willow, willow, weary. Have you a lover a dangling after you? Hey, willow, weary, oh. I would fain discover if you have a lover. Oh, marvelous! 
I have hitherto been deaf to the voice of love. I seem now to know what love is. It has been revealed to me. It is Archibald Grosvenor. Yes, Patience, it is. We shall never, never part. We will live and die together. I swear it. We both swear it. Ah. Uh, but, oh, horror. Oh, what's the matter? Why, you are perfection. A source of endless ecstasy to all who know you. I know I am. Well? Well, bless my heart. There can be nothing unselfish in loving you. Merciful powers. I never thought of that. Oh, to monopolize those features on which all women love to linger. It would be unpardonable. Why, so it would. Oh, fatal perfection. Again you interpose between me and my happiness. Uh. If you were but a thought less beautiful than you are. Would that I were, but candor compels me to admit that I'm not. Our duty is clear. We must part, and forever. Oh, misery. Oh. Yet I cannot question the propriety of your decision. Farewell, patience. Farewell, Archibald. Oh, but stay. Yes, patience? Although I may not love you, for you are perfection, there is nothing to prevent your loving me. I am plain, homely, unattractive. Why, that's true. <laughs> the love of such a man as you for such a girl as I must be unselfish. Unselfishness itself. Though to marry you would a very selfish be, Hey, but I'm tall, tall, willow, willow, where be? You may all the same continue loving me. Hey, willow, where oh. All the world ignoring, I'm now on a door.
show by sentence judicial. This seems the initial, then why don't you run? They cannot have led you to hang or behead you, nor may they all wed you, unfortunate one. And ever as we pray you, by God's day of Oh, but I'll say you, what is that you got? Broken at my patience's barbarity by the advice of my solicitor in aid, in aid of a deserving charity. I've put myself up to be raffled for by the advice of his solicitor. He's put himself up to be raffled for. Oh, urged by his solicitor, he's put himself up to be raffled for. Oh, heaven's blessing on his solicitor. A hideous curse on his solicitor. Oh, heaven's blessing on his solicitor. A hideous curse on his solicitor. Such an opportunity may not occur again. Such a judge of blue and white and other kinds of pottery. From early oriental down to modern terracotta. Put in half a guinea, you may draw him in a lottery. Such an opportunity may not occur again.
Jane, I play you draw the first. He loved me best. I want to know the worst. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
Lipshade and pearly 
these maids love me, and how hopelessly. Oh, patience, patience, with the love of thee in my heart, what have I for these poor mad maidens but an unvalued pity? Alas, they will die of hopeless love for me, and I shall die of hopeless love for thee. Sir, will it please you read to us? Yes, child, if you will. What shall I read? One of your own poems. One of my own poems? Better not, my child. They will not cure thee of thy love. Mr. Bunthorne used to read us a poem of his own every day. And to do him justice, he read them extremely well. Oh, did he so? Well, who am I that I should take it upon myself to withhold my gifts from you? What am I but a trustee? Ah. Here is a decollet. A pure and a simple thing, a very daisy, a babe might understand it. To appreciate it, it is not necessary to think of anything at all. Let me 
Let us think of nothing at all. Gentle Jane was as good as gold. She always did as she was told. She never spoke when her mouth was full, or caught new bottles their legs to pull, or spilt plum jam on her nice new frock, or put white mice in the eight-day clock, or vivisected her lost new doll, or fostered a passion for alcohol. And when she grew up, she was given in marriage to a first-class earl who keeps his carriage. I believe I am right in saying that there is not one word in that decollet which is calculated to bring the blush of shame to the cheek of modesty. Not one. It is purity itself. Here's another. <laughs> Teasing Tom was a very bad boy. A great big squirt was his favorite toy. He put live shrimps in his father's boots and sewed up the sleeves of his Sunday suits. He punched his poor little sister's heads and cane peppered their four post beds. He plastered their hair with copper's wax and dropped hot peepities down their backs. The consequence was he was lost totally and married a girl in the core de Valley. <gasps> Mark you how grandly, how relentlessly the damning catalogue of crime strode on till retribution, like a poised hawk, came swooping down upon the wrongdoer. Oh, it was terrible. Oh, sir, you are indeed a true poet, for you touch our hearts, and they go out to you. Uh, oh, this is simply cloying. Ladies, I am sorry to appear ungallant, but this is Saturday, and you have been following me about ever since Monday. I should like the usual half holiday. <laughs> I shall take it as a personal favor if you will kindly allow me to close early today. <laughs> Do not send us from you. Poor, poor girls, it is best to speak plainly. I know that I am loved by you, but I never can love you in return, for my heart is fixed elsewhere. Remember the fable of the magnet and the churn. But, but we don't know the fable of the magnet and the churn. Don't you? No. Then I will sing it to you. Oh. <laughs> Scissors and needles, nails and knives, offering love for all their lives. But for iron, the magnet felt no him. Though he charmed it, iron, it charmed not him. From needles and nails and knives, he turned, for he sent his love on a silver churn. A silver churn! A silver churn! His most aesthetic, very magnetic, fancy took his turn. If I can wheel a knife or a needle, why not a silver churn? His most aesthetic, very magnetic, fancy took his turn. If I can wheel a knife or a needle, why not a silver churn? An iron and steel express surprise, the needles open the well drilled eyes, the pen eyes fell shut up, no doubt. The scissors declared themselves cut out. The kettles they bought with rage to sell. While every nail went off its head, and hither and thither began to roam, till the hammer came up and drove them home. It drove them home. It drove them home. While this magnetic, parapentetic lover he lived to learn, by no endeavor can magnet ever attract a silver churn. By this magnetic, parapentetic lover he lived to learn, by no endeavor can magnet ever attract a silver
are gone. What is this mysterious fascination that I seem to exercise over all that I come across? A curse on my fatal beauty, for I am sick of conquest. Patience! I have escaped with difficulty from my Reginald. I wanted to see you so much that I might ask you if you still love me as fondly as ever. Love you with the devotion of a lifetime. Hold! Unhand me or I scream! If you are a gentleman, pray remember that I am another's. But you do love me, don't you? Madly, hopelessly, despairingly. That's right. I never can be yours, but that's right. And you love this Bunthorn. With a heart whole ecstasy that withers and scorches and burns and stings. It is my duty. Admirable girl, but uh, you are not happy with him. Happy? I'm miserable beyond description. That's right. I never can be yours, but that's right. Oh, but go now. I see dear Reginald approaching. Farewell, dear Archibald. I cannot tell you how happy it has made me to know that you still love me. Ah, uh, if I only dared. Sir, this language to one who is promised to another. Oh, Archibald, think of me sometimes, for my heart is breaking. He is so unkind to me, and you would be so loving. Loving. And advance one step, and if I am a good and pure woman, I scream. Farewell, Archibald. Stop there! <laughs> Think of me sometimes. Advance at your peril! Once more, adieu. Many when 
Something has gone wrong with me since that smug-faced idiot came here. Before that, I was admired, I may say, loved. Too mild, adored. Do let her poet soliloquize. The damosels used to follow me wherever I went. Now they all follow him. Not all. I am still faithful to you. Yes, and a pretty damosel you are. No, not pretty. Formidable. <laughs> Cheer up. I will never leave you, I swear it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I know what it is. It's his confounded mildness. They find me too highly spiced, if you please. And no doubt, I am highly spiced. Not for my taste. No, but I am for theirs. But I will show the world I can be as mild as he. If they want insipidity, they shall have it. I'll meet this fellow on his own ground and beat him on it. You shall, and I will help you. Will you? Jane, there's a good deal of good in you after all. <laughs> what I shall say. Your style is much too sanctified, your cut is too canonical. Sing bar to you, ha ha to you, and that's what I shall say. I want the beau ideal of the morbid young aesthetical, to doubt my inspiration was regarded as heretical, until you cut me out with your passivity hermetical. Sing boo to you, poo poo to you, and that's what I shall say. Sing boo to you, poo poo to you, and that's what I shall say.
Yes, it's clear that our only chance of making a lasting impression on these young ladies is to become as aesthetic as they are. No doubt. The only question is how far we have succeeded in doing so. I don't know why, but I have an idea that this is not quite right. I don't like it. I never did. I don't understand it. I do it, but I don't like it. My good friend, the question is not whether we like it, but whether they do. They understand these things, we don't. Now, I shouldn't be surprised if this is effective enough <clears throat> at a distance. I can't help thinking we're a little stiff at it. It would be extremely awkward if we were to be struck so. I don't think we shall be struck so. Perhaps we're a bit awkward at first, but everything must have a beginning. Oh, here they come. Tension! <laughs> oh, Sophia, see, see. The immortal fire has descended on them, and they are of the inner brotherhood. Perceptibly intense and consummately utter. Oh, how Botticellian! How fra Angelican! Oh, Art, we thank thee for this boon. I'm afraid we're not quite right. Uh, not supremely, perhaps, but oh, so all but. Oh, Sophia, are they not quite too all but? They are indeed jolly utter. I wonder what the inner brotherhood usually recommends for crap. <laughs> Ladies, uh, we will not deceive you. We are doing this at some personal inconvenience, uh, with a view of expressing the extremity of our devotion to you. Uh, we trust it is not without its effect. We will not deny that we are much moved by this proof of your attachment. Yes, your conversion to the principles of aesthetic art in its highest development has touched us deeply. And if Mr. Grosvenor should remain obdurate, which we have every reason to believe he will. I wish they'd make haste. We are not prepared to say our yearning hearts will not go out to you. By sections of threes, rapture! Oh, it's extremely good. For beginners, it's admirable. The only question is, who will take who? Oh, the Duke chooses first as a matter of course. Oh, I wouldn't think of it. You're really too good. Nothing of the kind. You are a great matrimonial fish, but it's only fair that each of these ladies should have a chance of uh, hooking you. It's perfectly simple. Observe. Suppose uh, you choose Sophia, I take Angela, Major takes nobody. <laughs> Suppose you choose Angela, Major takes Sophia, I take nobody. Suppose you choose neither. I take Angela, Major takes Sophia. We 
your estate? Capital, the very thing. <laughs> If Sophia I choose to marry, I shall be fixed up for life. Then the Colonel Dean, not tarry, Angela can be his wife. In that case, a precedent and singer, I shall live and die. I shall have to be contented with the heart of sympathy. He will have to be contented with the heart of sympathy. In the case of precedent and singer, I shall live and die. I shall have to be contented with the heart of sympathy. I shall have to be contented with the heart of sympathy. I shall have to be contented with the heart of sympathy. If on Angie I determine at my wedding she'll appear, decked in diamond and ermine, major then can take appear. In that case, unprecedented saying that I shall live and die, I shall have to be contented with the tulip all in life. He shall have to be contented with a heart that sympathy. In the case of precedent and single, oh, he will live and die. He will have to be contented with the heart of sympathy. He will have to be contented with the heart of sympathy. He will have to be contented with the heart of sympathy. Some debate internal, if on neither I decide. Saffir then can take the colonel and keep me the major's pride. In that case of president, it's single, I shall live and die. I shall have to be contented with their heart's that sympathy. He will have to be contented with the heart of sympathy. In the case of precedent and single, he I shall live and die. I shall have to be contented with the heart of sympathy. I shall have to be contented with the heart of sympathy. I shall have to be contented with the heart of Gratitude. 
<laughs> I will do so at once. However popular it may be with the world at large, your personal appearance is highly objectionable to me. It is. Oh, thank you, thank you. How can I express my gratitude? Uh, by making a complete change at once. Henceforth, your conversation must be perfectly matter-of-fact. You must cut your hair and have a back party. In appearance and costume, you must be absolutely commonplace. Ugh. No, 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 pardon me, that's impossible. Take care. When I am thwarted, I am very terrible. I can't help that. I am a man with a mission. And that mission must be fulfilled. I don't think you quite appreciate the consequences of thwarting me. I don't care what they are. Suppose I won't go so far as to say that I will do it, but uh, suppose for one moment I were to curse you. <laughs> ah, very well. Take care. <laughs> but surely you would never do that. I don't know. It would be an extreme measure, no doubt, to steal. But you would not do it. I'm sure you would not. Oh, reflect, reflect. You had a mother once. Never. <laughs> then you had an aunt. <gasps> ah, I see you had. By the memory of that aunt, I implore you to pause ere you resort to this last fearful expedient. Oh, Mr. Bunthorne, reflect, reflect. I must not allow myself to be unmanned. It is useless. Consent at once, or may a nephew's curse... Hold! Are you absolutely resolved? Absolutely. Will nothing shake you? Nothing. I am adamant. Very good. Then I yield. <laughs> You swear it? I do, cheerfully. I have long wished for a reasonable pretext for such a change as you suggest. It has come at last. I do it on compulsion. <laughs> Victory! I triumph! When I go out of door, of damosels a score, all sighing and burning and clinging and yearning will follow me as before. I shall with cultured taste distinguish gems from paste, and high diddle diddle will rank as a niddle if I pronounce it chaste. A most intention man, a soulful eyed young man, and not a poetical, super aesthetical, out of the way young man. Conceive me if you can, and every day young man, a commonplace type with a stick and a pipe and a half red, black and tan, who thinks of bourbon hops, more fun than Monday pops, who is fond of his dinner and doesn't get thinner, a bump for beer and chops. A commonplace young man, a matter fact young man, a steady and southerly jolly bank holiday every day young man, a Japanese young man, a blue and white young man, Francesca de Rimini, Mimini, Pimini, je ne sais quoi young man, a Chancery Lane young man, a Somerset House young man, a very delectable, highly respectable, thruppany buzz young man, a pallid and thin young man, a haggard and lank young man, a green and reality, grove and a gallery, foot in the grave. Young man, a soul and cross young man, a how and James young man, a pushing a park who wasn't a daughter who wanted a new house young man. Conceive me if you can, a matter of fact young man, an alphabetical, alphabetical, every day young man. Conceive me if you can, a matter of fact young man, an alphabetical, alphabetical, every day young man. my last act of ill nature, and henceforth I am a changed character. Reginald, dancing? And what in the world is the matter with oh, you? Patience, I am a changed man. Hitherto I have been gloomy, moody, fitful, uncertain in temper, and selfish in disposition. You have indeed. Well, all that has changed. I have reformed. I have modeled myself upon Mr. Grosvenor. Hitherto, henceforth, I am mildly cheerful. My conversation will blend amusement with instruction. I shall still be aesthetic, 
but my aestheticism will be of the most pastoral kind. Well, Reginald, is all this true? Quite true. Observe how amiable I am. <laughs> but, Reginald, how long will this last? Well, with occasional intervals for rest and refreshment. As long as I do. Oh, Reginald, I'm so happy. Oh, dear, dear Reginald. I cannot express the joy I feel at this change. It will no longer be a duty to love you, but a pleasure, a rapture, an ecstasy. Oh, my darling. <laughs> but, oh, horror. What's the matter? Is it quite certain that you have absolutely reformed? That you are henceforth a perfect being, utterly free from defect of any kind? It is quite certain. I have sworn it. Uh, then I never can be yours. <laughs> Why not? Love to be pure must be absolutely unselfish. And there can be nothing unselfish in loving so perfect a being as you have now become. Oh, but, but stop a bit. I don't want to change. I'll reform. I'll be as I was. Oh. Uh, interrupted! <laughs>